I am making an update to my Ojama Arm Dragon deck. I recently had an idea that I thought could make it at least a bit better. So I figured I'd go ahead and mess around with it a little bit and actually really like how it works. So starting off with the monsters, I play two copies of Ojama Yellow, Green, and Black. The reason I'm playing two of the, each of them is just because you need to play them so that you can keep get me only at discard fodder and other things. And they're just kind of important. As weird as it is for Ojama Black, Yellow, and Green to be important. Next I play two copies of Ojama Red. Oops. Ojama Red has the effect that when it's normal summoned, you can special summon up to four Ojama monsters from your hand. The only downside is they do have to be in attack position, but that doesn't matter because you're usually going to be linking them off, tributing them, or whatever. And lastly, I play three copies of Ojama Blue. Ojama Blue just has the effect that if it's destroyed by battle, you get to add two Ojama cards from your deck to your hand. This one's a little bit better. And then, moving on past the Ojamas... I play one copy of X Head Cannon, one copy of Y Dragon Head, and one copy of Z Metal Tank. These three are just in here so you can be able to summon V, v to Z Dragon Catapult Cannon, so you can summon Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon. Next, I play one copy of Arm Dragon Thunder Level 7. This is just in here so that, well, you summon it and then you have that part of Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon done. And then the part of this deck that easily can be changed, but I actually kind of like it, is I also play one copy of Arm Dragon Thunder level 10, and one copy of Arm Dragon level 10. You summon the Arm Dragon Thunder level 10 off of all 7's effect, just by getting rid of a monster from your hand. And then you summon Arm Dragon level 10 either by tributing Arm Dragon Thunder level 7, which I forgot to mention, its main thing is that it has the effect that while it's on the field, or graveyard, its name is Arm Dragon Level 7. But Arm Dragon Thunder Level 10 has the effect that its name becomes Arm Dragon Level 10, control of it cannot be switched, or it gains effects based on how much attack it has, or if it has one or more attack point, its name becomes Arm Dragon Level 10, 10 or more, control of it cannot be switched. A hundred or more, it can't be destroyed by battle. A thousand or more, once per turn, quick effect, you can send a card from your hand to the graveyard. Then target one other card in the field and destroy it, and if you do, it gains a thousand attack. And then it has ten thousand or more, once per turn, you can destroy all other cards on the field. Although that last effect of it is, I've never been able to use it. It's really hard to get to have its ten thousand attack points. And then Arm Dragon level 10 just lets you discard a, a card to destroy all the monsters your opponent controls. It's just walking Raigeki. And then what I found to be actually really good in this deck is the Horus Engine. So I play one Kebis NUF, one Happy, and one Duomotef. All the Horus monsters can be summoned from your graveyard once per turn as long as you control a King Sarcophagus. And then they each have their own unique effects that trigger when one of your cards leaves the field because of an opponent's card. Kebis NUF is by far the worst one, just because it just makes so that your opponent cannot target Horus monsters you control. Or, and then Happy lets you take target two cards in the graveyard or banished, return them to the hand. And then Duomitath lets you draw one card for every different named monster you have in your main monster zone. The next, I play three copies of Imseti Glory of Horus. Imseti has the effect that once per turn, you can discard it and another card to add King Sarcophagus from your deck to your hand, and then you can draw one additional card. And then, just like the other horse monsters, you can summon itself from Grave just by controlling King Sarcophagus. And then, its last effect, it has the same trigger effect as the others. Where you can then send one card on, on your opponent's field. I think it's on the opponent's field. Let's see. 
You send one card on the field to the graveyard. So I like it because it's non-targeting, non-destroying removal. And that's it for the monsters. For spells, I play one copy of Armed Dragon Blitz. This is the third card that can come out if you don't want to play the level 10 dragons. Because if you don't want to play that, those two and this, then you can just take those out and toss in something like Called by the Grave and Monster Reborn or Change of Heart, something like that. But anyway, you can take out those three and that gives you two spots for any other card you want to play. As this is a 41 card deck, unfortunately, because I couldn't figure out what the last card take out should be, so I figured, why not? It's just 41. But Arm Dragon Blitz lets you target an Arm Dragon Monster you control, and then summon a Arm Dragon Monster from your, I think it's hand or deck. Note from your deck or graveyard, either add it to your hand or special summon it, ignoring its summoning conditions. And if you do, it cannot attack this turn. Which I believe that's what it was. Let's see. Okay, you just cannot attack directly. You can only activate one on Dragon Blitz per turn. Next, I play three copies of Oja Magic. Oja Magic has the effect that when it goes from your hand or field to the graveyard, you can then add. One copy of Ojama blue, green, and black from your deck to your hand. So the main thing you're supposed to do is you have Ojama Magic and Imseti in your hand. You then discard Imseti and Oja Magic to then add King Sarcophagus, the four or the three Ojama monsters, and then you get to draw a card. So just by having discarding two cards, you end up getting five, which I think is fun. And the best part is the Ojama, yellow, black, and green are just discard fodder. Because the cards you need them for let you banish them from grave. And then next, I play three copies of Oja Match. Oja Match has the effect where you can disc where you send an Ojama card from your hand or face up field to the graveyard. To then take an armed dragon and an Ojama monster from your deck, add them to your hand. And then after, immediately after its effect resolves, you can normal summon one of those two monsters. And then Oja Match has the grave effect of you can banish from your graveyard, target three banished Ojama monsters, shuffle them into the deck, and then draw a card. And make sure that I actually had that correct. It wasn't like put them on the bottom of the deck and draw a card. Then I play three copies of Ojama Simulation. Ojama Simulation lets you reveal a light machine fusion monster from your extra deck. Banish Ojama monsters from your hand, field, or graveyard, and then summon materials of mo or monsters that it lists as material from your hand, deck, or graveyard, I believe. Yep, equal to the number of Ojama monsters you banish. So if you banish three, you summon three. Banish two, summon two. And then Ojama simulation also has the same grave effect as Oja match. Next, I play three copies of Fusion Tag. Fusion Tag lets you target a monster you control. Reveal a monster in your a fusion. Is that a fusion monster? You reveal a fusion monster in your extra deck, and then the targeted monster's name becomes that monster's name until the end of the turn. Let's see. Yep. Or it counts as that monster's name for a fusion summon, I should say. And then, finally, for the spells, I play three copies of King's Sarcophagus. King's Sarcophagus has the effect that horse monsters you control can be, not be destroyed by card effects unless they specifically target it. At the start of the damage step, once per turn, if your horse monster battles an opponent's monster, you can then use this card's effect to send that monster to the graveyard. And then, its final effect is... Up to four times per turn, you can discard one card to then be able to send a Horus monster from your deck to a graveyard. And then four traps, I play two copies of Ojama Pajama. Ojama Pajama has the effect that if an armed dragon monster and or a light machine fusion monster you can totally destroy a battle or card effect, you can banish an Ojama monster from your graveyard instead. 
And then it has two other effects where you can only use one of the two effects per turn and only once that turn. So if you use one effect, you can't use the other one for that turn. Even if you have both copies of Ojama Pajama. But the first effect lets you take an Ojama card from your deck and add it to your hand and then discard a card. And the other effect is that when it's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon as many of your banished Ojama monsters as possible. But you hardly ever use that second effect. Mostly you want it for its first effect to be able to add Oja Magic and then discarding Oja Magic. Or adding Ojama Red and then discarding Oja Magic. And that is it for the main deck. Like I said, the main deck is 41 cards. And if you want, don't want to play the level 10 dragons, you can take out both level 10 dragons and Arm Dragon Blitz. And then just add two cards that you want. And then next, for the extra deck, I play one copy of IP Mascarena. IP Mascarena has the effect that when it's used as link material, then the link summon monster cannot be destroyed by card effects. Or is it by your opponent's card effects? I can never remember. Let's see. Cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. I always get that confused. Don't know why. And then during your opponent's main phase, you can activate Masquerade's effect to be able to link summon using this card you control. Next, I play one copy of SP Little Knight. SP Little Knight. If you if you don't have SP Little Knight, then you can just play any rank any number of rank twos that you would like instead. Just because you the, you do summon a bunch of Ojama monsters, so instead of using them as link material, you can also just summon them. Or use them as rank 2 fodder. But Little Knight has the effect that if it's Link summoned using a monster summoned from the extra deck, you can then target one card on the field or in, or in the graveyard and banish it. And then if your opponent activates a card or effect, you can activate IP Mascarina's or my IP Mascarina. You can activate SP Little Knight's effect to then be able to target two monsters on the field, including one on your field. Banish both until the end phase. You can only use each effect of SP Little Knight once per turn. Next, I play one copy of Appaloosa, Bow the Goddess. Appaloosa gains 800 attack per material used for its link summoning. And for once per chain, if your opponent gets a monster effect, uh, you can have Appaloosa lose 800 attack points to then be able to negate that monster effect. The fun part of Appaloosa is that it's a once per chain effect, so if you make it using four materials, then Appaloosa gets four monster negates. Next, I play one copy of Access Code Talker. Access Code Talker has the effect that when you link summon it, you target a link monster that was used to make it, or you can target a link monster that you used to make it, and then gains a thousand attack times that monster's link creating. And then you can banish a link monster from your graveyard, target one card your opponent controls, and destroy it. And then you can use that effect as many times as you'd like, but you cannot banish two monsters that have the same attribute. So, let's see. I believe in this deck that is... Five? Because... No, four. Because we're playing every attribute except water and fire. I believe. But like I said, that's at most. Next, I play three copies of Saryuja Skulldred. Saryuja Skulldred is just in here because you could easily make it by normal summoning Ojama Red, then using Red's effect to summon four Ojama monsters. Which, if you see Oja matching an Ojama monster and Oja magic, that already gives you a guaranteed Saryuja Skulldred. Unless your opponent has... A Nibiru, because I always forget Nibiru exists until it actually exists in my opponent's hand. But Saryuja Skulldred has three effects depending on how many monsters we use to make it. If you use two or more, then if a monster is summoned to a zone it points to, then that monster gains 300 attack and defense. Three or more, once per turn you can special summon a monster from your hand. And then four... You can draw four cards and then put three cards in your hand at the bottom of your deck in any order. 
And lastly, for Link Monsters, I play one copy of Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Underworld Goddess has the effect that she's unaffected by your opponent's card effects unless they specifically target her. And when when it's Link summoned, you can then target or target. You can then activate its effect to then just negate all face-up cards your opponent currently controls. I believe it's until the end of the turn. Okay, it's all face-up monsters your opponent controls. And it's a permanent negation. And then, also, if your opponent activates a, a card effect that would summon a monster from the graveyard, you can then negate that effect if you do destroy that card. Or I believe it, that's how it works. Nope, you just negate the activation. And then, because I'm playing Horus, I'm playing rank 8, so I play one copy of number 90, Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. One copy of number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. And one copy of number 1, Infection Buzz King. Number 90 has the effect that if your opponent gets a monster effect, you can detach a material to negate that effect. And then if it was a Galaxy card, you can then destroy, you then destroy that monster. And then if it has a Photon card's material, it cannot be destroyed by battle. Or is it card effect? It cannot be destroyed by card effects. My bad. And then, during your opponent's turn, it has the effect that you don't really use until, like, game two or three, at potentially. Where, during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can then take a Photon or a Galaxy card from your deck and either add it to your hand or attach it to itself as a material. And then Hope Harbinger has the, the effect that if your opponent takes a spell card or the effect of a spell card, you can then negate that effect and then attach it to itself as material. And then if your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can detach a material to redeclare the attack on itself. And lastly, if an XZ's monster leaves the field because of an opponent's card, you can do Hope Harbinger's effect to then have, target one monster in the field, and it gains attack equal to that monster's, so, uh, I believe it's original attack. But that effect is hardly ever used. Yeah, that destroyed monster's original attack. And then Infection Buzz King has three effects. The first one, when it's Xyz summoned, lets you look at your opponent's extra deck and send one card from it to the graveyard. The second effect lets you detach material, target one monster on the field, or monster, you target one card on the field, and then destroy it, and then if it was a monster, you inflict damage equal to that monster's original attack. And its final effect is during your standby phase, you can just attach one card of your opponent's graveyard to it as material. And for the fusion monsters, I play one copy of VW Tiger Catapult. This is the card you'll use fusion, fusion tag with. Then I play one copy of XYZ Dragon Cannon. XYZ Dragon Cannon just lets you has the effect you can discard a card to then target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. And you can do that as many times as you want as long as you have cards in your hand to discard. Which the, just the Ojama's ability to recycle themselves and keep getting you more cards is the reason why the Ojamas are actually kind of important because they are, in fact, discard fodder. And lastly, I play one copy of VWXYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon. In order to summon this, you have to banish these two monsters you control. It still counts as a fusion summon, which is why fusion attack works. And... Once per turn, you can target, what was it, target, discard card, target card your opponent controls and banish it. Nope, you don't discard, you just target one monster, one card your opponent controls, banish the target. And when it declares an attack on an opponent's monster, you can target the attacking monster to change its battle position. And flip effects don't activate, but you're, if you're summoning this, you're never going to be activating its effect in battle, because you're going to be banishing it. So you can summon your one copy of Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon. Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon has the effect that your opponent cannot activate cards or the effects of cards that have the same name as a banished card. And then once per turn. Oh. The Armed Dragon Catapult Cannon has the effect that during your opponent's turn quick effect. You can banish a monster from your extra deck or deck to then banish all cards your opponent currently controls 
and in their graveyard. Last time I used this card, I used it against whoops, one of my friends that was playing uh, Wind Witch Invoked Dogma Dogmatica. And I banished all the important parts for his engines, so he just could not play because I summoned this card. And 9 times out of 10, when Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon is summoned, you are winning. But that is it for my Armed Ojama Horus deck profile. If you have any ideas what I can do to improve the deck, and ideas of other decks like to be made, or decks like to see face each other, feel free to comment down below. I always read the comments. And I try my best to actually do what they suggest. And thank you for watching.